Good morning. So last time I was, uh, I did not finish my uh, survey about uh, Cobham type results, but uh, so the last part of my survey I will include it in uh, the open uh, problems I will mention at the end. And so I now I will start with a proof of uh, original Cobham theorem. Not all the details because it's quite long, but with the main steps. And inside the steps, it's uh, just technical. I mean, there is nothing else than techniques. So what remains is that. So I recall here the or original version of uh, Cobham theorem in of 69. Remember, I choose two bases, P and Q, integer base, classical base of numeration. And, uh, they are multiplicatively independent, these two numbers. Then a, s a set of integer e will be recognizable in two bays, p and q, if and only if it is a finite union of arithmetic progressions. So now that you have seen uh, also the talk of uh, the lecture of uh, Christian, I imagine that it's more or less clear what is the recognizability of languages and for sets of numbers just to write them in some bays and to find an automaton that recognizes it. And uh, due to the result of uh, 72, we can just translate. Well, in the translation, the only thing to notice is that, so this, when you translate it directly, then you obtain something for sequences on the alphabet 01. But in fact, it is not a big deal to have something for all sequences that are defined by a substitution of constant lengths. Okay, so I remember, maybe just with an example, what is a, an automatic sequence? Let's, for example, on three letters, you take something of constant lengths, something like that. You iterate your substitution on the letter A. It will create bigger and bigger prefixes. It will converge. I denote it like this. And if, for example, you take a map that send AB to 0 and, and C to 1, this sequence is called 3 automatic. Okay, that's all. So this is a language I will use to, for the proof. I will not prove it with uh, numeration systems, but with uh, substitutions. Yes, it is equivalent. And in fact, in all, in this proof, this is something that noticed uh, Georges Ancel in the 70s, trying to find a, a better proof. It, that it's not clear in the paper of uh, Cobham, but there are two steps, two main steps. Oh, sorry, no, I'm not there. Okay, there are two, it's if and only if. These are the two things to prove. Sorry, I go too fast. And what part, one part is, let's say, easy, not difficult. This one, because, okay, so in Cobham theorem, it's then E is P and Q recognizable. But it is, of course, sufficient to prove that it is a P recognizable because P is an integer. So how to prove that? Uh, so let me just take something like that, okay? Just purely periodic. There is no this uh, U at the beginning. And let's, let's suppose that, okay, V is a zero one one which means for your set of so the index in this which means that your set e is equal to okay so you have two arithmetic uh, progressions of length uh, of, uh, of length 3 so how to to see this characteristic sequence as the image of a fixed point. 
you will see it's easy. So I uh, say p, base p. Uh, if I take base p equals to 4, I will have too much letters, 12. So let me just take uh, with two letters. No. No, I should take. No, let me take p equals 2. Sorry. Then I will need uh, six letters. And so my letters are a1, a2, a3, a4. And you will see that you can generalize the construction very easily. Just do that, do the following. a1, a2, a3, a4, a5, x6. And then stop and you do a1, a2, a3, a4, a5, a6. And if you iterate this substitution, you will have a1, a2, a6, a1, a2, a6, blah, 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 blah. So it means. And then once again, so now what will be your letter to letter map? Well, a1 is sent to 0, a2 is sent to 1, a3 is sent to 1, a4 is sent to 0, a5 to 1, a6 to 0. And you see that as it repeats, then you will obtain your characteristic sequence. That's as easy as that. And now, if you want to include the, the U, uh, well, you have to find some, uh, some trick, but it's not so difficult. I so, uh, prefer to avoid details because well, it's not uh, necessary to, to do that. Just with that, you see that. Uh, well, it's not difficult to prove this way. The other direction is much more difficult, as you will see. And I recall you that Eilenberg in his book said that uh, it will be interesting to find more reasonable proof. So I hope mine is a reasonable. At least you can understand the steps. So what I said some minutes before, is that in fact, in Coban theorem, there are two steps. It was uh, observed by uh, Georges Ancel. And the first one is using the fact that you have a multiplicatively independent basis, is to show that your set is syndetic. Syndetic meaning that the difference between two successive, two consecutive integers belonging to E is bounded. So if you write E to be E1, to we say that E is synthetic, synthetic if there exists K such that E G plus one minus E G is less or equal to K. Okay. So in every every interval of length K you see one element of E. So this is a part, the first part. And then you should do uh, what remains. And in fact, the first part was uh, quickly well managed by Georges Ancel. He, ha he has a, a nice proof of that, that I will show you. What is the, OK. So the settings are these, OK. OK, I forgot to, to make a compilation. So you have, so Z here, you should think of, you should think to Z is this, OK? So it is P and Q recognizable, or automatic, which means that it can be produced by some X, which is a fixed point of a, of a substitution of length P, by some Y of length Q, and by two letter to letter morphism, phi MC and psi. This is uh, the settings. Okay, P and Q are multiplicatively independent. Uh, I'm in this direction. And what are you supposed to prove here? Uh, it is that it is uh, ultimately periodic. So first, let's show that Z is uh, synthetic. But what does it mean for a sequence to be synthetic? It means that, so in this case, maybe, uh, and I should say, if and only if, 
in the characteristic sequence, uh, letters appearing infinitely many times, many times appear with bounded gaps. This is what it means. If I make a picture of the sequence, what what could happen is that uh, at some you have all integers starting from some uh, n0. So the 0, so in this characteristic sequence, it means that you have 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Maybe you have some zeros uh, before. So, uh, and this is uh, synthetic. This one is synthetic. 0 appears just finitely many times. So we don't have to take care with this characterization. We just have to take care about uh, these. And the other way around, maybe the last one is there and then you just have zeros. Or in this case, we, you will also say that it is synthetic. And the zeros appears with, uh, appear with bounded gaps. So this is the symbolic translation. Is it clear? Yes. So let's uh, proceed by uh, contradiction. You have to choose one of the two letters. Here I choose the alphabet 01 to be, because it's uh, easier to present, but for the proof it has uh, no problem. So let's say it is a zero that appears with unbounded gaps. Okay, so there is two observations. Um, yes, maybe from here I can say something. What is the proof? So, what do we have? So this is Z. Here is X that projects with phi to Z. Here you have uh, Y that projects with Psi, like this. So, zero appears with bounded gaps means that, okay, here you will just have ones and longer and longer uh, words with only ones, okay? So first observation, if you know the pumping lemma for automaton, it could help, and I will say why, Be because it is a substitute version of the pumping lemma. So now, okay, what is the strategy? The strategy will be the following. So now we know that zero appears with non unbounded gaps. So with one substitution, let's say with this one that corresponds to P and this one to Q, we will try to find some particular words that are longer and longer, that have some structure, this one, and for which you know that at the end of this word, okay, some long words, at the end of this word there is a zero. Okay, and this word, in fact, will be, this one will be of length something, a constant times a power of p. So this, using this one, you, you know where some zeros are depending on the, some powers of p. And with the other one, you will try to find holes, big holes, where you are supposed, you are not supposed to have uh, some zeros. Because as he, here they are longer and longer, in fact, inside, you can find at least, it's not tau. Some words like this, let's say they are projected, so, like this, where you don't have zeros. And in fact, you can also have such words, so they are bigger and bigger. And these words will be of length, something like d to the power q to the n, or let's say to the m. And as we are proceeding by contradiction, so uh, if you succeed 
using the fact that, yes, I should, I should say, you know that when you are multiplicatively independent, you have that this, well, it can run over the positive integer or the integers, it's not a problem. This is nothing else than R plus. So it is dense, okay? Just uh, with the description of uh, subgroups of, uh, of R that you obtain this. Using this, you will see that once you have these words and these words, it's the end of the proof. Because you will obtain that using the density that in such words, you are, you are not supposed to have some zeros, you are able to put a zero. Okay. And you should use also that your sequence, because it is par contradiction, is not periodic. Up. So, okay. So what are here these, uh, these words? In fact, you can find such, let's say, structured uh, word. You see, so, so for all n here, you will end with an a. And what is an a? Is a letter that project to zero. Okay? This famous zero that you will put somewhere where it is not supposed to be. And what is the proof of that? It's easy, but I think it's easier to see it uh, with automaton. So when you have uh, an automaton, I read, I start somewhere. Have something like that. Okay. I don't know, something like that. Let's say something else. And you start here, and you want to go, for example, here, okay? You want to go from here to, so there are paths. And if you know that there are infinitely many paths, which is the case with zero, because of the corresponding fact is zero occurs uh, infinitely many times. So if you, if there are infinitely many paths to go from here to here, as your graph is finite, it means that you are doing some loops. Okay? For example, uh, well, this one. So what will be, maybe with colors, U, V, and W. You see, it, it's easy. So this path is U. What you are doing here will correspond to this, this is, is V. In fact, it will be Vn. Yes, it's V. Yes. And uh, W will be this. You know, with this path, uh, well, then you can do U, some number of, of time V, and then go to W and you will arrive there. If you try to do the same job with substitution, you obtain exactly that. It's nothing else. No, it's not, that's not difficult. It's a pigeonhole principle. In fact, I will use the, yes, the main argument is pigeonhole. It's all the time, yes? What is J? Sorry. Uh, ah, yes, there exists some J. Okay, okay. There exists some J. Why well, is technical, in fact? If you want to prove this, you will see at some point that ah, uh, yeah, there is something missing, so you will find the trick with the G. Uh, okay, so and the second, so this is so th then now you know that each time you do this pass, let's say, then you end with the a that project onto a zero. Now w there is another word, so now I construct it with respect to the other substitution which is like this. What is, what is the idea? It's easy. In fact, with Cobham, everything is easy. What is difficult is the path. To find all the 30 easy things to do, I know if you go, if you see the Everest, it's not the Everest and Cobham, but it looks not so difficult to the Mont Blanc, which is uh, close to here. But a lot of people died because they went into some paths that Lead, uh, lead in nowhere. So you try to go up and you fall down, you die, 
And so the difficult thing was to find uh, the good way to, to go. OK. Uh, so, so what is the ID? OK, you have longer and longer words. And you know that sigma of y, uh, y is a tau of y, which means that y is a concatenation of images of tau. And the same thing, of course, as it is a fixed point for powers of tau, which means that here, well, this word is a concatenation of tau or powers of tau. And it means that this word is some, sorry, some tau of uh, some letters. And using, using pigeon all principles, there is taking longer and longer words, the longer and longer, so concatenation of uh, tau n of a, you will see one letter that repeat uh, all the time. You will see, because there are just finitely many letters, and such words you have infinitely many. So it means that th this word will project in some words where you do not see zeros. Okay? It is again a pigeon hole. So, yes, and well, then what remains is just technical. Uh, to have such structure, well, it's, uh, if you have the ID in mind, uh, work uh, maybe uh, 10 minutes or one day, you will find at the end in uh, bounded time. And now, okay, you can just look at what is the length of these words. So this is why I, I took the constant length case because the lengths are easy to compute. Uh, length Q, and if you take a power, uh, it's uh, Q, uh, the square of Q, of, of, uh, of Q. So it is easy to compute. If you take some different substitutions where the length is not constant, boy, it's not, uh, they are equivalent to some uh, constant times alpha to the power i n, where alpha is a dominant eigenvalue of, of the incidence matrix of your substitution. But that's not a big deal. So this is the length. Huh? So here it's easy. So your Vn, tuck, tuck, tuck. Ah, yes, it's there. So you see it's clear, because tau is of length uh, q. Ah, sorry. I should put a, here it's Q. Here is Q, here two, and this is a P, because it corresponds to the other one. I'm oh, sorry, Q and Q. And in fact, this is the end, Y. I should take my picture. Why is it the end? Because, so now, what would you like to do? So I repeat once again, what would you like to do? What would be nice is to have, so Wn, which is here. So you know here there is a zero. And you would like to have, for example, so this is, uh, so, So, I n of b. If you are in, this, in such a situation, what does it mean? Bah, zero will project, no, sorry, it's a here. Will project to zero. But this word, do not project on a word that contains a zero. So you will obtain a contradiction. Okay? So what, what do you need for that? Just write what you need. That is, you need that. Uh, so, the length of Wn should be bigger than that. Yes, let's say strictly bigger. And strictly smaller than that.
I know it's not B, I, it's U prime E here. You should have that, okay. Uh -huh. well. And now I will use the multiplicative, multiplicative independence. So if I now change with, uh, with that, so it is Q I N, I need this to be less than, uh, where is it, D P, ah, sorry, it's not the same, here it's a M, sorry, P G M, which should be less than, uh, it is C plus one, Q I G, which means that if I divide, I should have Q I N, here it's one, and this, and if I stop, okay, as it is dense, it is proven, okay, because you can, in any uh, kind of uh, interval, you will find such an element. Okay, I take it and I have the contradiction. So it is as easy as that. So this was uh, what Georges Ancel extracts from the paper of Cobham and that it, he generalizes to um, non-standard uh, numeration systems, même quite general uh, numeration systems. Okay, so what now, what do we know now? is that all letters appearing infinitely many times, you can forget about that, appear with bounded gaps. In fact, in Cobham, it is enough to know that, but enough, then you need a lot of lemmas. But in my case, as I will present a proof using um, subshifts, I need also to have information, and this is the same information, with words. But then there is a very nice uh, trick that you can find. So I rec if you want to learn about substitution, I recommend you the book of uh, Martin Kefelec. That some years ago was not so, uh, it's, it's, uh, agréable. Uh, comment, comment on dit agréable, pleasant to read, because it was a typeset, I mean with a machine, but there is a new uh, edition, which is uh, much better to read. So it's uh, Martin Kefelec. It's a lecture notes in mathematics. And once you know, uh, when you have read uh, this, this, uh, this book, then 400 uh, numbers later, there is a group of uh, mathematicians called Piteas Fogg that nothing it has nothing to, to do with uh, Jules Verne, my university, because you know Phileas Fogg was a, a main character of uh, books of uh, Jules Verne. So you can look at this book, but it's more, but in Martin Kefelec you can, you have the details, you have proofs. Here it's more like a compilation of results. So to learn the tricks, you should go to Martin Kefelec's book. And inside the book, there is a nice uh, trick. I imagine that it was known from the 70s by some, for Mike Keane or Martin or some other guys, that without to work too much, not without to work, in fact, you directly have as a consequence that the same thing hold for words. Because if you take a substitution like Morse substitution, okay, So um, letters appear with bounded gaps. You want to know whether words of length two to begin are with bounded gaps. So in fact, what it is enough to do, just take the letters by a group of two letters, but in this way, you take this and then you take that, okay? Etc. etc. In fact, for the dynamics of the system, you change nothing. What you obtain are just uh, 
conjugate uh, subshifts. But what is nice, it, it is again a substitution. This, it is again a fixed point of a substitution. How do you do? Just uh, so you take the first pair of words. And so you take the image of that, one, this. And you, you, it should have the same length as the original one. That is, here was of length two the image, so you just take zero, one, and one, one. Okay, zero, one, and one, one. Then you have a new one, you take it, you take its image, which is uh, one, zero, zero, one. So you do this uh, amalgamation, one, zero, 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 etc., etc. You can check easily that it will produce exactly this sequence as the fixed point when you iterate this letter. And it is again of length two. Thus, in our context, you can show that when you, you take, so if you take this, and let me call this sequence you create with these pairs of letters, let me call it like this, and you will show again that it is P, maybe with some powers, and Q, maybe with some other power, recognizable. But you are exactly in the setting where we proved this, so you obtain that letters appear, that appears infinitely many times, appear with bounded gaps, which means with the first sequence, original sequence, that words of length two uh, that appear infinitely many times appear with bounded gaps, and that's all. What we did for pairs of letters, you do, you do it for, for triples of letters, for quadruples of letters, so you obtain that all words appearing infinitely many times appear with bounded gaps. It is very, very well explained with more details in the book of Martin Kefelek, even with uh, things with uh, matrices that are involved, and it gives a lot inf of information for substitutions. So this is what I say here. So my sequence was Z. So we, uh, we have uh, we finished the first part of the proof. Now, ah, yes, maybe I should now come to subshifts, but you have seen some. So, so a classical way to, to create subshifts is uh, so let's call uh, because for me, use sometimes sigma, or most of the time sigma, is the shift. For me, it's a substitution, so I should use another letter. So let's say S, does like shift. So, so you know that it is this sequence, this, uh, this map. Okay, just uh, if you are one-sided, you forget uh, the first letter. If you are uh, two-sided, you uh, translate this, uh, you shift it to the left. And the uh, classical way, not only for shifts, uh, is you have a, a point, you take the orbit closure. So here, as I am uh, working with one-sided, but it's not a problem with this kind of, prob of uh, theorems, I just create this. Okay? So for each one, I will consider the associated subshift. And you can check that, in fact, okay, the same phi and psi that you can, of course, uh, extend on the set of, uh, on the subshift, okay, are well defined there, and are such that, or for me, subshift, uh, a shift, the, the shift map, uh, I call it S. It, it does, does not depend on the, on the alphabet. Of course, it depends, but it's uh, easier to, to do like this. In this way, you, you have this there. So it commutes. It, and I don't know if you have seen 
maybe in the lecture of uh, karma, or well, you say that z is a factor of uh, x, and this map is a factor map. So x factorized to z, and y factorized to z too. And uh, so what you know about z, so now I will do like this. You have z. And what you know about z is that all words appearing infinitely many times uh, appears with bounded gaps. And in fact, knowing that, it means that for each, each length, there are finitely many words, yet you don't have to take care because they will not appear. And in dynamical terms, it means that your system, in, inside this one, there is, just, there is a unique minimal dynamical system. A unique one, and there is some, let's say, z prime, included in z, so that t of z prime is equal to z prime, and z prime minimal, which means, with respect to the shift, which means that, in fact, it, in each sequence, all words appear with bounded gaps. Okay? In this way, I avoid some finite set of uh, words. Okay, so we can think this is, it is not a problem, it's, it's just technical, with some general arguments, you can think that this is minimal. So recall, you, there are many definitions, uh, all orbits are dense, uh, all words appear with bounded gaps, etc., etc. <coughs> in fact, once you have this, and you know that you are produced by a substitution, in fact, if you read the book of Martin Kefelec, you know that you are uniquely ergodic. And uniquely ergodic, in other terms, it means that you can compute the, the frequency. I don't know, what does it mean? So I say uniquely ergodic. Okay. So there is a measure. But for words, it means that for all z, oh no, not z, uh, t in z, for all u, uh, yes, in the language, language of z, there exists some number, I call it mu of u, mu will be the measure, such that mm -hmm. ah, yes, it goes okay. We cannot stop it. See? Yes? Yes, yeah, we can. Okay. So that uh, or maybe no, I will not write it like this. It's T. This is the number, the number of occurrences of the word U that I see in this word, divided by yeah, n plus one goes to. This number, this means all words well, go to something. And in fact, it is uniform in uh, T. So you have, uh, you can compute the frequency. This is what you have to have in mind. You can compute it. And in fact, it is a limit. It's not uh, by an extraction of uh, a sequence. It's for the limit. So it means that there is a unique such way to compute frequency. There is a... So this measure, I call it mu. 
Okay. This is one uh, remark. And then, in these two systems, I can do more or less the same. In fact, you, you could be non-uniclear godic and project to a uniclear godic system. So maybe here, this kind of sequence does not exist. Uh, this kind of, yeah, it, it does not converge. You should take subsequences to have a convergence to something and with another subsequence to something else, which would mean that you will have uh, at least two ergodic measures. But inside all dynamical systems, there is one minimal, at least one. In fact, here you can have many, but as we are lucky, there is one which is minimal and is pre-automatic again. And it's easy. I'm always saying that everything is easy, but as I said, the steps, inside the steps, it's not too difficult. And the thing is that for primitive, no, for uh, substitutions, no, for matrices with uh, integer coefficients, you can always put them. So let's say that the incidence matrix of sigma is the following. You can always put the matrix like that. Okay. Okay. As you know that it is constant length, it means here, so remember that this incidence matrix describes the number of letters of your images, like that. As it is constant length here, the sum is equal to, uh, when you do the sum, it's P all the time. So in this block, it's P. And if you think to that and to the alphabet, which is there, let's say A prime, so it, this is something that produces just letters of its own alphabet. In fact, it is a substitution. It is well defined. You see, for example, in this one, okay, this is a, some other alphabet, but maybe it will produce some other letters. So it will not be, it will not create a subshift. Uh, I mean, a minimal subshift. Well, this is technical, but this one creates one. And in fact, this is the when you take sigma restricted to a prime, it is well defined. And in fact, if you see it inside your uh, fixed point, you will see bigger and bigger words belonging with just these letters belonging to this alphabet. And it, it, it is primitive because taking a power, if needed, you can suppose that all these are strictly positive. In my case, in my case. And so I take this one. And in fact, so up to some change of uh, dynamical system, I will have some new ones, but they are again P and uh, automatic, and maybe here Q M automatic. And the power I need is just due to the matrix uh, trick. Okay, and then I know that it is minimal, both. And as it is minimal, if you read the book of Martin Kefelec, you know it is uniquely ergodic. So you will have some other lambda, let's say P, and, of, uh, and delta. Okay. And here what you know is that uh, mu is the measure image, image measure, we say. Yeah. image measure of uh, lambda and of uh, delta. So now the idea if, is, is, imagine that we know how to compute exactly what are the measure of some sp special uh, uh, let's say, uh, sets. And that they are given by some power of P and here some power of Q or maybe the, the best is the, that I give the, what follows. You will see. So this is the situation. For the moment, I do not need uh, that it is not periodic, but you see, I want to prove it is periodic, so I do it by contradiction. I suppose it is not. And you will see where I will use it. And in fact, now that have, I have this picture, in fact, there is a, in a paper of uh, Charlton and Lucas Zamboni, they observed, but it was just uh, a lemma, but it is useful. And it's not uh, 
too difficult to prove. In fact, in the book of Martin Kefelec, again, just follow the proof of uh, unique ergodicity and do it carefully. Do not forget some terms that are not useful for unique ergodicity. Take them and you will obtain uh, this. So what did they show? Well, cylinders are just, this is what I mentioned. Take a word U, uh, the cylinder is the set of uh, sequences U S in X. Okay, that's all. So that uh, S, of course, is in X. All sequences of X be, uh, starting with, uh, with U. So you can compute and you will obtain that each of these are some power of, ah, sorry, Jimmy, I put alpha, sorry, it's uh, P here. Alpha is equal to P, sorry. So here, any U is equal to some constant F times time this. And this constant, it's important because I will use again a pigeonhole principle, belong to a finite set. Okay, but this is what we know here. I would like to know the same thing here, because if from here to there, I know that the measure of cylinder is uh, characterized by powers of P, of course, I will know the same from here, but with powers of Q. And it cannot be, except if they are multiplicatively, multiplicatively dependent. Because this is, it will be the end of the proof. So there is one technical thing. Uh, here, in fact, when you look at the pre images, it is bounded. You just have a bounded number of pre images here. It is important just to, to have the same result as uh, the description of the measures of cylinders for this one. And once you have that, uh, sorry, maybe it's not exactly the same, lambda, and here, I took, okay, so here, sorry, it was nu, and here it was nu, and nu, I don't know how to pronounce it. Okay, so now you have a description of the cylinders of, of Z. They are like this or like that. And in fact, using both sides, you find, of course, a different G, I just here took the union, okay, and now take, uh, do the pigeonhole principle, as you have finitely many constants, some of them appear for infinitely many uh, powers, well, maybe it's minus s, but it's not a problem, so you have uh, two cylinders that are described by one way like this, and the other way like that. You just divide and you will obtain that they are multiplicatively dependent. And that's the end of the proof. Okay, just describing the measures. And in fact, this proof also holds for uh, the most general case you can imagine. Okay, so not only for constant lengths. And now I have time to speak about Open problems, but I said, well, uh, any question? No? Alors. I have to go to the end, more or less. Uh, I'm here. So I'll sp there is a very nice result I like a lot. And hopefully, Christian helped me doing some uh, giving some uh, definitions. It is, so what happened now in, we were in, in, in the set of integers. Now what happened in R, or more generally in RD? Because we have seen there is Cobham in N and there is a Semenov theorem in, in higher dimension but with inte inte integer vectors. And now what happened in R? So, and Christian yesterday told me that she thought to this problem long time ago and she had some difficulties. And in fact, it is the, the very, very nice point about their result, but that you don't see when you read the paper, is that you had to find the good notion of uh, automaton to recognize things. 
And in fact, the good notion they used, they called this uh, weak automata. But uh, I said to Christian that I don't like this uh, terminology, and she agreed. We should say structured automaton. What is it? Just with a picture. Okay. So remember, Christian spoke about uh, Bushy automaton. And to be uh, recognized by Bushy automaton, you should pass through uh, infinitely many accepting uh, states. It is that? No. No. Infinitely many times. Yeah, yeah infinitely many infinitely times. times. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Things like that with arrows everywhere. Maybe that. What else? I don't know. Okay. You have something like that. So usually you have just when you are bushy automaton, you have accepting uh, states. But what they ask is that when you have a connected component, here you have a three. Yeah, this one, and this one, you have this one. Then the states are all either accepting or all rejecting, which means in this case that they should be like this, and that's okay. And uh, you are accepted if, uh, well, so at the end you should stay in a connected uh, component, and so you should uh, just stay here, ultimately, or there, if you are rejected, or there. This is the structure they used, and they say, okay, you are recognized uh, weakly, or I don't know. The terminology has to be found, to be yeah, so found. For the moment, I stay with weakly, but it's not weakly. It's the converse. It's uh, the automaton are structured, and they obtain these very nice results. They obtain some uh, <laughs> other results I will mention. So it was uh, together with uh, so it's Wajdo uh, Brusten and there was also Veronique Bruyère. Okay, the settings are the same. You have two bays, uh, multiplicatively independent. It's always in standard bays. Here, I so I take uh, some uh, compact set, but the result is also true for any set. I suppose that it is recognizable in these two bases. Then they showed that then it is a finite union of uh, intervals where the extremities are rationals. Of course, this is a difficult direction. The other one is uh, not so difficult. And what, how can we see more or less that? Uh, why extremities should be rationals? That's easy. But that's easy, no? That's not. Looking at that, you can understand. So suppose you are uh, uh, a real that is recognized, that belongs to this set. So it means that then at the end, you should stay here. But here, what is the biggest uh, point? It is the point, because re here we are recognized, let's say, in base 2. So I should have, I should be able here to read, let's say like this, all words of length 2. Like this. So when I'm I'm here, the biggest point is when I arrive there, here it's, in fact, it is one, 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 one. So I do something here, and then to be the biggest point, I should just do this, because if I go to zero, then I will be less than this one. So you see that when you do something and you stay here, the, the biggest point to, yes, is a one, 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 and so it is a rational. So maximal points with respect to the connected components produce, of course, rational points. And this is the idea of, uh, of this. And now, how do they manage to do, the, to do this? In fact, it's 
difficult to, to describe the steps, but there was another result I will mention by Feng and Wang, but using completely different uh, stuff. It's uh, Hausdorff dimension, Hausdorff measures, etc., on the uh, attractors of uh, IFS. And I discussed with him about the proof, not of this, but of his own results. And in fact, it's like a Cobham result. In fact, the counter set is, uh, is recognizable in base three here, the real counter set. And you see there are a lot of intervals. And in fact, if you can find some structured intervals in the same spirit as I did for Cobham, that is, you control completely the bounds. So with one, let's suppose that the counter set, okay, you know it is recognizable in base three, suppose it is also recognizable in base two. So you have, you will find some intervals where there are no points of the counter set. And with the other, with, uh, for example, with the base two, you will find some points that are not, that belong to the counter set. And using the independence, you will put such a point in uh, this hole, in this uh, empty interval. So this is the same kind of proof. In fact, at the same time, there is also a result, the same result, but it's a bit weaker of uh, uh, Adam Sesky and Bell. And uh, so, in the, so but it's not published. I, I thought it was, but it, it is not, not yet, I imagine. So by in PhD of uh, Julien Brusten, they have the result for higher dimensions. Ah, yes, what I forgot to say, why did I take a compact? In fact, if you don't have a compact, in fact, we can suppose that you are, al we are always in the unit cube because the integer part of the element of x, when it is not a compact, in fact, this is a Cobham theorem gives the solution for this. In fact, first you treat this with, you look at just at the integer parts, it is easy to prove that they are recognizable in these two bases, so it is a finite unit of arithmetic progression. Okay, this is done. Now you just look at what happened in the unit interval, and this is this. Here, the, it is exactly the same. They use the same enough, and then they can suppose they are in the unit cube or you are a compact set. So they have this, and one difficulty, because you see it's a, they used uh, logical stuff, so the difficulty then was to describe what are geometrically these uh, sets. Maybe you can guess, you can imagine. What is it? What? Poly? Right. Polygonal, uh, yeah. Well, polyhedrons with a uh, boundary described by a uh, uh, well, let's say uh, rational uh, surfaces, but I will give the definition. But so maybe you don't know what is an IFS. The counter set is an IFS, so iterating function system. So take here, just think to the fi to be some uh, affine maps, or, and even. Here in, I'm, let's say, in dimension one. They are just like this with the AI, as you, we need that these are contractions. You do that. And in fact, you can prove using uh, the Hofdorf topology for uh, the, the compact set, the set of compact sets, you can show that there is a fixed point for the map that for a compact K send the union we have here. So you can show it, it is a contraction and thus you have a fixed point, a unique one. We call it K, we say it is the attractor of the IFS. And if you want to learn about that, I think the best book is the books, a series of books of Falconer, Kenneth Falconer. Okay, we say well, that it is homogeneous when the contraction ratio is always the same, A. And uh, at the same time, more or less, but they do not, do not know each other. The Belgium guys and guys from Hong Kong, they obtain this, which is uh, stronger than the result of my, my I will uh, make some comments. Okay, suppose 
Ah yes, sorry, I want to go too fast. Well, in, the in the case of the contour set, huh, so the contour set is this. All words, all uh, real numbers uh, that in base 3 we write without the, the 1, the digit 1, or it is this. And in fact, this is an IFS for the following map. And in fact, IFS can be, well, this is a presentation, but it's maybe better to write it this way. So your attractor is just uh, the union of uh, G1. Maybe it's not the best way to write it. Okay, take the union or the image of all composition of these maps on K. And if you look at the counter set, when you are doing that, you are producing words. If we stop at step N, it is words where the N first digits are composed uniquely with 0 and 2 not with one, due to this, you see? I'm using here two and here zero, not one. So you will see that, and so at the, at the limit, you will see that you, you will produce, oh, yeah, such uh, uh, the counter set. And in fact, homogeneous IFS are recognizable in the base of the ratio. Well, this is an observation, it is uh, written nowhere. But here they have uh, some better results because they show that when you have an affine map that stabilizes uh, K, then it should be, they, they say, uh, com commensurable with, uh, so the ratio should be alpha, should be logarithmic commensurable with A. This is uh, exactly the definition here. And at the same time, again, they all mention their own papers, uh, Feng Wang and Elekes, Keleti and Mate. They obtain the same, but they also manage non-homogeneous uh, IFS. So, and, okay, again, if the, you are stabilized by a linear map, affine map that, uh, whose, whose ratio is alpha, then the logarithm of the alpha should be a combination, uh, rational combination of uh, logarithm of AI. Okay, but, but as I said, IFS imply recognizability, but the converse is not true. And also, it is just for R that they have this result. So, what? Okay. So I say for the constor set, we have this. And in fact, the graph that is behind, is just this, in fact we can uh, summarize the situation of IFS saying that I will take all composition that are allowed by some graph, and in this case, the graph is very easy. And the difficulty with graph-directed IFS, you, it means that you cannot take all this. You should take that belong to some uh, infinite pass of some graph. Okay, I call it like this. And then you, you, when you are GDFS, you are is equivalent, uh, recognizable in the base of the ratio. Uh, so this is what I said. In fact, with this observation, the result of uh, Boislaw Brusten and Brusten in this PhD is stronger than the results I mentioned before. But the other, they, are, they have a better result in some other direction. And in fact, so in the PhD, so we can translate, yeah, 
with this, let's say, black box here, we can translate their result in settings that interest uh, the community working on uh, IFS. So let K compact, which is not a finite union of uh, rational polyhedrons. Okay, that is uh, sets that can be expressed as a finite Boolean combination of linear constraints with rational coefficients. And this is this is a good point for them because when you look at re uh, results for IFS, they should always suppose that uh, the, the Hausdorff dimension is like this, like that. They cannot uh, handle the geometry. And so they cannot have an if, if and only if. Never. But with their result of uh, bourgeois de Brustein, they can have an if and only if. So suppose K is an attractor of uh, an homogeneous, yes, and here it's homogeneous all the time, GDIFS, which is by the observation equivalent to be recognizable. So you just uh, translate. So with conf construction ratio A, and you are also, suppose you are also constructed by another GDIFS with ratio B, then you have this, and in fact, you have a converse also. So I think it, uh, to me, it's a very, very nice result. And it was not exploited. Uh, the reason is that, uh, because I, I was in the PhD of uh, Julien Brusten, and I, uh, I asked the question during the before, after, and during the PhD, uh, what about the numeration, uh, blah, 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 higher dimension, connection, ah, oh, sorry, connection with, uh, JDEFS, in fact, they, they don't care. What, where is the, is it the côté? En bas, okay. In fact, the advisor is uh, Bernard Boisgelot, and he's not interested in uh, dynamical system, IFS, etc. He's doing uh, robots and competition with robots. And he told me that, in fact, for him, it was a, a kind of uh, uh, intellectual game to work on Coban theorem because he could find some uh, efficient way to store uh, data. And the notion of weak or structured automaton was what he was looking for because to manage uh, data for him, it, it was uh, very uh, relevant. So the kind of uh, set we are dealing with, in this case, with re recognizability, sorry, or GDFS, or here in this case, it's just IFS for this one. For this one too, they are just IFS. I, haven't, uh, I don't know if there are pictures of uh, GDIFS. I did not find, they are not my pictures, sorry. I should have uh, put the the references on internet. Okay. Now, so in here, there are, if you just look uh, between the lines, there are a lot of open problems. But Feng told me that he was, he was working on that, and so there will be some new results soon. Alors, I have a few times. Okay, so I, I will try to go quickly. Now you can imagine, if, uh, just prime of imagination, a lot of uh, problems. But there are three that I like. So for the Gaussian integers, so quickly. So it corresponds to the case of the integers, n. In fact, using the base minus p plus e, you can write, well, it is a base, okay. Thus you can ask exactly the same question. Okay, write, take a set of Gaussian integer and write it in base minus p plus i and try to do blah, blah, blah. Do we have a, a Cobham uh, result? In fact, when you want to do like uh, Georges Ancel, you should prove that and it is an open problem. It looks difficult, so they ask, it was, uh, it was uh, Ancel et Safer, they asked to specialists like uh, Michel Waldschmidt 
what Michel Vachmid told them, it is that there is a famous conjecture of number theory called the uh, four exponential conjecture. So if it is true, this is true. It's not equivalent. But it means, okay, it's uh, not so easy. And you can rewrite it maybe in a more dynamical way. It is equivalent to, to know that uh, rotation on the two torus with uh, this angle is uh, ergodic, which means that these three numbers, one, and this, and that, are uh, linearly, z linearly independent. So if you can prove that, so you will have this density uh, result, and then you could, uh, then with the result of uh, Anser et Safel, Safer that suppose that, you obtain that, the you obtain the syntheticity of your set that is recognizable in base minus i plus i, minus one plus i, and minus two plus i. But if you have any ideas, please tell me. Another one is about this that you have seen in the lecture of uh, Shigeki Akiyama, which was about this, the rosy fractal, that is an amazing uh, thing that it tiles a plane and it is obtained in a very strange way. Do you remember? You take a fixed point of substitution, a particular one, on three letters, and you consider the sequence of letters as uh, unit uh, vectors in, the, in dimension three, so the, uh, the canonical one. And when you read one, two, one, three, well, you do one, two, one, and three uh, will go like this, blah, blah, blah. And then what he showed that, in fact, it go along and it stay in a cylinder of some direction. You take the orthogonal plane and you decide to project all these vectors along this direction to this plane. And you color the, 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 these points using, the, let's say, the color of the last vector you used. Okay, each vector is uh, connected to the, bl to the blue, red, and green. And what you obtain, strangely, because if you take something random, it will never give you a compact set. And even if you try to do a compact set, it will be ugly. It will be not as structured as that. And in fact, what's nice too, if you try to do it, move it there, here, the blue one. The green, put it here, and the red there. It's exactly the same set. So it is like, Interval exchange, we call it the uh, piecewise uh, uh, translation or exchange of domain. And in fact, this exchange of domain is conjugate to the dynamic of the substitution. The idea of Rosy was the converse of what was done at this moment. Uh, usually you have some geometric uh, dynamical system, geometrical dynamical system, and you try to find some partitions, uh, Markov partition, in order to code the dynamics and to keep with uh, the same properties as the original one, but with some tractable uh, way to, to work with, because you have combinatoric on words. He did the converse. He had a, rotation, he had a, a combinatory a subshift, and he wanted to know the geometric representation. In fact, it is, uh, it is a, a GD IFS, where the two maps are these ones, and there is a graph behind. I don't have time to, to put it on the blackboard, but there are here the maps, where alpha is the root of this. And uh, uh, so the result of boisjo brustlen Brustain do not apply to that, neither those of the Hungarian team and Hong Kong team because they are working for the moment in R. So it is an open problem. Now again with, uh, with um, Gaussian integers, but now you can use them to, to have the expansion of the complex uh, numbers. And the twin dragon, you know, maybe, certainly. Tuck, tuck, tuck. It is this one. Again, can you, well, is it recognizable? Or it, is it a GDFS or for some other ratio? This we don't know. This one, you see, for, uh, for Rosie, it was a nice object, but with 
just switch two letters in your substitution, you will obtain this one, you see, which is ugly. And it tiles the plane, this one. Take copies of this, and it will tile the plane. It's a, you cannot even imagine it tiles, but it tiles. Okay, so very strange. And we don't have a, a Cobham tap result for such uh, objects. And I almost done. I think I have, but I will go quickly. Now you will understand quickly. You are in a polynomial uh, over the field of uh, with p elements. Take some polynomial b. Then, as there is a, a Klein division, you can write all polynomial of this set in base b and ask the same question. That's exactly the same question. So the problem they have is, uh, okay, what is multiplicatively independent? Well, we can imagine what is it, and there are results. Uh, but we don't know if it, what is exactly the good uh, property to use. What is finite union of arithmetic projection? That's the corresponding thing. This is uh, completely open, even if, uh, well, I forgot to mention that it was a question of Michel Rigaud. And there are two works, one by uh, Vaxweiler and uh, Michel and Vaxweiler. Uh, or equivalently, what is recognizability in all base uh, B? And what is uh, syntheticity? And to finish, the sets that, that are recognizable in all bases are these ones. In fact, uh, so these correspond exactly to arithmetic progressions. This corresponds to arithmetic progression, but for the degrees. Okay, and this is, so there is some, uh, let's say, prefix that is fixed, and then you have uh, anything. But there are some that are missing. Uh, I think that there is uh, Narad Rampersa that have another family, and I found another one. But I think that the description is not well written, so maybe, well, there are work to do. And uh, classical Cobham theorem, is of some help there because what you can do, if when you are recognizable in base B, you can show that your set, the, if you take just the degree of the polynomial of your set, it is again polynomial in the base of the degree of the polynomial of the base. And then you use a common theorem and then you show that uh, your set of polynomials should have its degrees uh, in uh, arithmetic progression. Okay, and that's all. Thank you.